Yo, what is up guys? Hope you're all having a fantastic day. So season four for Halo Infinite has finally arrived. And so today we're going to talk about what exactly this season has to offer and my thoughts on it. So first things first, the most obvious thing is Infection. So that mode has finally been added to Halo Infinite. If you don't know what Infection is, it's basically where one person just tries to infect all the survivors to make them join their side. Whenever you kill a survivor, they join your side. You turn into, uh, I guess you could say a zombie basically. And yeah, you just chase people down with energy swords, try to kill them all, and the survivors just try to survive. Of course, they're allowed to use guns, and you're also able to scavenge the battlefields for better equipment or weapons. It's relatively the same as in previous Halo games. And yeah, it's a pretty good mode, definitely worth trying out. And is definitely the star, of course, of uh, Season 4. So with the new season, we also got two new maps, one arena map and one big team battle map. Let's take a look at the arena map. So the, this arena map is called Forest. And yeah, aesthetically, it looks very pleasing. And I think this is a massive improvement compared to all the maps we've had before. Uh, you know, it's a more unique map. Instead of just some other UNSC facility, we got like some kind of jungle place in some like ancient ruins. It's a lot more unique. And the layout so far from what I played, I don't mind it. Um, I think it's a solid map for sure. Now let's move on to the other new map, which is called Scar. Now this is a big team battle map. And this one, I believe, is also a pretty good map. I really dig the layout. When I first saw this, I thought it would just be another map where it's just located somewhere on the ring. And I, f I feel like that's kind of boring. I thought it was going to be something like High Point and what's the other one? Fragmentation and Deadlock. I thought it was going to be like those where it just is some random place on the ring. But no, this one actually has a unique feel to it. It does actually feel like a banished facility that you're in. And so I really did enjoy that. And this one actually does support vehicle play pretty well, I would say as well. If you liked Oasis, I think you'll definitely like this one as well. Because these two feel similar in a sense. It seems like, I don't know if it's 343 just getting better at like making maps maps but it feels like these new maps that we're getting from season three and season four they feel like something's changed with the maps is all i'm saying because <laughs> they they definitely have increased in quality but uh yeah that's scar for you so with season four we also got a sandbox update we got two new equipment unfortunately no new weapon but at least we got something else to replace that weapon we got two equipment instead one of them is a bit kind of meh the other one's a, a lot more unique but yeah let's take a look at those equipment so the first equipment is called the quantum translocator this one i'm still learning how to use it but basically you're just able to kind of teleport back and forth is the way it works it's an interesting equipment i think it's definitely fun and yeah i'm still learning how to use it so the other new equipment we have is the threat seeker this one is very much like the threat sensor except instead of it being a ongoing sensor that just stays in place for like a few seconds or minutes this one is just like a one-time ping and it actually marks the players so you could see them through walls and stuff i don't know i i think it could work pretty well for like i guess like ranked and stuff but i i don't see myself using this that much so not only that but we finally got a career rank system in season four now if you don't know what this is it's basically just an xp system like really every other game where you're able to just play games um, and get XP and you know your rank increases you do get some rewards from it it's not really anything major it's just emblems um, yeah at least we finally got an XP system so if you're a person who just likes grinding through ranks um, yeah you can definitely do that in this game now and apparently there also will be a reward not sure what it is but it seems like it might be something good once you hit max rank so there's at least some sort of incentive for that maybe they're gonna give something good but yeah they've been hinting that they're gonna give a reward for uh, hitting max rank all right so now let's get into the customization stuff so this season four also came with a battle pass of course and not only that but we got a new armor core so let's take a look at the armor core. So the new armor core we got this season is called Hazmat. And as the name entails, it has to do with Hazmat stuff. Um, it's just a bunch of Hazmat inspired stuff slapped together with uh, yeah, the Halo universe, I guess you could say. And of course it just goes well with the 
infection mode. And it, honestly, this core doesn't look that bad. It looks pretty nice. The helmets are actually pretty decent because last season, which was for the spy core, the spy core, the spy core helmets were really not that good in my opinion. There's only like a few that were okay. And this one, I think most of them are pretty uh, solid for the hazmat core. So yeah, we also got a new battle pass. Of course, it's got 100 tiers. Now the cool part about this battle pass is that it actually contained two weapon models that you can get. That changes up the bulldog and the battle rifle. And of course, you just got your usual helmets, attachments, all that kind of stuff. Armor coatings, weapon coatings, got all that stuff, and the credits as well. And there's also some cool um, armor effects in there that are pretty cool looking as well. So not only that, but apparently for this season we're getting five new events. Two of them being the narrative events, I'm assuming. And one of those narrative events begins next week, I believe, which is called the Hazmat Event. And yeah, this of course contains a free pass that has free rewards in it. Now those rewards for all these events have actually been leaked, which I'll make future videos on. But uh, right now, currently, we don't know what the modes will be for those events or when exactly they're going to come out. Only the hazmat event, which is the first one. And then the second narrative event is called Containment. And the third event is called Tenrai 2. So the Tenrai, or rather the Yorai armor stuff is coming back. We're getting some new Yorai armor for the Yorai core. And yeah, we're getting these through two Tenrai events, which is Tenrai 2 and Tenrai 3. So the fifth final event that we're going to get this season is called Cyber Showdown 2. Once again, we don't know what the modes will be for these events. But um, if you've played, I think Cyber Showdown, they did a first, the first one was available in I think season one. It was literally the very first season. That's when we got the attrition game mode, I believe. So yeah, it's probably going to be something similar to that, the cosmetics of that event. Um, and who knows, maybe I think I have a great feeling that attrition may come back with Cyber Showdown too, because they did say, this was like a long while ago, that they were looking into like tweaking, I think, attrition and other modes like that to make it better or something. So I feel like I think it might make a return with this new Cyber Showdown event. It would make the most sense in my opinion. So yeah, those are the five new events that we'll be getting, which is Hazmat, Containment, Tenrai 2, Tenrai 3, and Cyber Showdown 2. And finally, the final thing here that we got in this season is a bunch of Forge updates. So apparently we got like a bunch of bug fixes and stuff and a bunch of new objects. Now, I'm not much of a forger myself, so it's kind of hard to uh, mess around with this stuff. But the biggest things that we got here is water. So we're finally able to place water down in Forge. It's the first time we've ever gone in this, which is actually really insane. And it's awesome that we finally got this. Um, and yeah, it's just great to see it in uh, Halo. So you're able to actually place water around on your maps now. So there was a bunch of new Forerunner objects that they added as well. You're now able to place down a generic skull, a generic ball, generic uh, flags and stuff like that, or you could just mess around with them instead of having to play that specific mode or something like that. Here's another big thing we got is visual effects scaling. So before you weren't able to scale the effects like the fire and stuff. And so I actually kind of messed around with this a bit on my own. Um, and yeah, wow, you're able to scale that up quite a bit, which is pretty cool. And I'm sure it's going to help a lot of forgers to create, you know, more unique environments and stuff. But uh, yeah, that's about it. That comes with uh, the Forge update and really everything with Season 4. They also did release a Ranked Slayer playlist, which has Bandit starts. Uh, so that's a nice little addition. But other than that, that's about everything you need to know about Season 4. Let me know what you guys think. Personally, I've been enjoying Season 4 so far. I think it's alright. Obviously, all this stuff is good. But, yeah, I don't know. I mean, I, I think it's solid. I think it is unfortunate that it's taken this long to get a lot of these features. 